Armstrong, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> I actually was the producer of all of those records. I didn't know I was the producer. All I did was my job. That's who I worked for. I worked for the man who owned the company. <laughs> but I did the work. I did the work. And everybody said, oh man, well, uh, if you would have done that, I mean, your name should have been on. I said, what my name should have been and what it was was two different things. Mm -hmm. It was a job. But it took a lot of years for me to understand that the industry don't care about anything except seeing your name. Mm -hmm. They see your name out there as the producer, then they'll come after you. Not because of what you claim to be. Mm -hmm. Don't mean anything. But you know something? It took a while. So I went out and I started doing my own. Mm. Alors, on the solo record, how, how many recording solo records? I have 15 altogether. 15? I have 10 of them that I actually did and produced on my own mm -hmm. label. But far as producing, yeah. I produced hundreds. Okay. Sly and the Family Stone, Peaches and Herb. That was me. That was my band. And I did those things with Ken Williams, who was the writer. Those are the kind of things that meant and will always mean something to me. That will always mean something to me. The song here, the title, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. That was because of the band that I had just finished playing with. So I wrote one of the songs, you know, did one of their songs to say thanks for being on, you know, working with them. That's the kind of stuff that I did. Every album mm -hmm. that I've ever done <clears throat> was a concept album. That's what I learned mm -hmm. from producers like Bob Porter, George Kerr, mm -hmm. Sammy, uh, Sammy Lowe. I, the list goes on and on. King, uh, King Curtis. People have no idea how big King Curtis was as a producer because the people that he brought to Atlantic Records all made money for Atlantic Records. The Rolling Stone, Proko Haram. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aretha Franklin, uh, Otis, not, uh, not Otis, but uh, Midnight Hour. Uh, uh, well, no, Midnight Hour is uh, Wilson. Uh, Wilson. Wilson. Ah, Wilson. 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 Uh, Pickett. Pickett. Yeah. yeah. All of these people, Louis Armstrong, mm -hmm. Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Lou Rowe. Did you do Lou Rowe? Yeah. yeah but see, the <laughs> thing was is that Curtis is the one who picked them up yeah. and brought them to the label. Yeah. Without, he never had to say anything. Freddie King. Freddie King. Freddie King. Freddie King. But see, what they did. And B.B. And BB. What BB. they did is told Curtis, whatever you want to do, you got it. Here is your money. Whatever it, they they just put it in the in the account fund. He never had a million seller record until he died with his name as yeah. producer and writer. And everything else, the man was a multi-millionaire, kept that band going and doing things around the world. That's what it was about for him. He knew where the bodies were buried, and he knew how to do it. What he did for his own thing was copy. Just like the other groups did, they would copy us and make millions well, Curtis used to copy them and make millions. <laughs> it was amazing. But that's, that's the way, you know, the business. Music is for everybody. When, when you learn the business, 
you learn it. Yeah, I don't understand what the movies on Shaft in the world is the great movies in the great success. It's incredible, there are no name on the on You know who should, there's one name, mm -hmm. there's one name that should have been plastered throughout all of Shaft, Tom McIntosh. He was the arranger. He was the writer. He took Isaac's ideas okay. and formulated them. Isaac came up with a yeah. little theme, mm -hmm. but Tom McIntosh wrote around that theme and made it yeah. music. Yeah. You would think that Isaac no. would have given him some money. Mm -hmm. If you don't give him the credit, at least give him some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You buy, you pay. Yeah, of I've course. had more people than the Berlin Monkeys to tell me about, oh man, you, you played on an X-rated movie. I said, no. I created an X-rated movie. Just a present. Yeah. Hello. Explain me the CD from the camera. Okay. This is my live. Mm -hmm. This is an all-star band that I do in Portland, Oregon. And this was live. This is a concept about food. Every song in here is about food. But it's also about New Orleans cooking style cooking. So that makes that one work. This one is the blues. But it is also soul and a little touch touch of R and B. This group is the group that I have used and have become partners with the young man here uh, of being able to do my own music my way, any way that I like. We now have over 5,000 songs in our repertoire. This is a young man who is a writer, mm -hmm. Jack Hoban. He's a writer. He wrote all of these songs, most of them. But he thought that I didn't know exactly what I was doing. So consequently, it took a few years for it to come back around to me to finish everything that we did. Now, it's selling because it is in the vein where people like funk and R&B, but it's also pop on top of it because of his voice. And here, these two started my own label and we were three B's that's where it came from Bross Townsend Bob Cunningham and Bernard Purdy well the whole concept of, of wanting to do this was to make things happen and get a distributor and distribute this that well neither one of them one of the, all they wanted to do was to sell the CD on the gig. Okay. Okay. I didn't know. I had no idea that that, that was their way of thinking. And uh, this particular group was originally called Masters of Brew 10 years ago. But we had to fire our manager. Ah, this he was, So he was ripping off the money. Yeah, yeah. So we became godfathers of Groove. For the show? For the show. Three days in yeah. Paris. Oh, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy about the way things are going and the business itself. So it's working out really well for me. You like Paris? I love Paris. Love Paris. Thank you, Bernard. My pleasure. My last one with Bernard. Long time no see, brother.
Father. You know we got to do something together. We don't say when, but we'll do it. We'll do it. That's okay? All, that's all, with I all we need, like with that respect. You know why? We know only this way because we learned that business you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Man, I think about this. To, to, to get back to this size, you know what? This, I was 167 pounds. 167 pounds. I can't believe it. I mean, I was just playing good looking. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm pretty. Yeah. You, you, you know when somebody said, when they say this, you say, if, if you don't like the music, Matt, you're going to buy it for the picture. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice, okay. Oh, la. Oh, la, la. Oh, la, la. All Stopping. right. Stopping.